In the last section, we talked about the first and the second step in the sensation experience. So the first step is the um, happens at the peripheral receptors. Um, the second step is where the um, action potential travels up the axon to the do dorsal root ganglion, and that's where the um, soma of those um, peripheral sensory axons lives. Um, the third step in the sensation experience, the information ascends via bundles of axons in the white matter to various regions of the brain. So those bundles of axons that have the common um, destination are called tracts. We talked about that in an earlier lecture. So um, that's neurons with long axons that connect distant regions in the nervous system. They're called projection neurons and they travel in those bundles or tracks with the same origin and common termination. Um, somatosensory pathways are often named for the origin and the termination of the tract that contains the second neuron in the series. So um, the first neuron in our series is our peripheral um, receptor from the periphery. The second neuron is um, going from the spine to the, to the central nervous system. So the somatosensory pathways, luckily for helping us remember, um, are a lot of times named that way. So an example of that, and we'll talk about the individual tracts, is the spinothalamic tract. Um, so that name tells you it goes from the spine to the thalamus. So we know it's going from the periphery to the central nervous system, and we know it's an afferent tract. If it were like the cerebrospinal tract, we'd know it's going from the cerebrum to the spine, and it's an efferent tract. So, and that's a motor tract, of course, but the somatosensories are afferents, and the name helps you out a lot. So, um, lucky for us, they're, they're named in, it in an easy fashion. So, I love the um, somatosensory pathways because um, they help us out with their names. So, there are three different types of pathways to the brain that bring sensory information, and we're going to talk about each of these individually, starting with the conscious relay pathways. Um, then there's the divergent pathways and the unconscious relay pathways. So um, the conscious relay pathway goes to the, sal the thalamus and cerebral cortex from the spine. Um, divergent pathways go to various areas of the brain stem and cerebrum. And the unconscious relay pathways go to the cerebellum. So um, conscious to the thalamus and then on to the cerebral cortex, divergent to various areas. Some are conscious, some are unconscious. And then unconscious relay pathways to the cerebellum, and those guys are all unconscious. We're not aware of them. So an important distinction between the pathways is the fidelity of the information conveyed. The information in the conscious relay pathway is transmitted with high fidelity, meaning it provides accurate details about the stimulus and its location. They're discriminative sensations. They allow us to tell the difference between different sensations. Um, the divergent pathways include both conscious and unconscious information, and the unconscious pathways are all unconscious. They go um, straight from the spine to the cerebellum. They carry proprioceptive and other movement-related information. Um, we're not aware of it. It's unconscious. There's a little three and a half minute video on sensory pathways. It's your option whether you want to watch it or not. Okay, so I, this, like I said, this module has a lot of charts in it and the charts contain the information that I really want you to know. Okay, so the conscious relay pathway, they bring information about the location and the type of stimulus to the cerebral cortex. So they're giving us that conscious information. It's high fidelity, accurate details about the stimulus and its location. They're somatotopically arranged, meaning the information in the brain is arranged similarly to actual anatomic arrangement. And we'll look at a little graphic that explains that. So within the conscious relay pathways, there are two different tracks that I want you to know about. The first one is the dorsal column medial lemniscus system. So as I said in an earlier lecture, a lemniscus is a, sort of another way of saying tract. It's um, n um, a group of axons that go from a common origin to um, similar locations. The dorsal column medial lemniscus system um, carries discriminative touch and proprioception, that's conscious proprioception, 
Stereognosis, which is the integration of touch and proprioception to identify an object, such as a key in your backpack without using vision. So you use stereognosis, like say that you're digging around in your backpack or your purse for your keys, and it's dark, or at least it's dark inside your backpack, and so you have to be able to identify those different objects by touch without the use of visual information. So um, an interesting thing about stereognosis, it has to do with the sensory information you're getting, but it also integrates with memory information. Like say that you came from a culture where keys did not exist, and you, were feel you didn't have any visual information, you were feeling a key inside a bag or something, you would probably be able to identify the features of it. You could say, well, it's a small, hard object. It's uh, pointy on one end and round on the other. It's got a, um, a jagged side, maybe, and a smooth side. You could describe it, but you don't have anything in your memory telling you that's a key. However, if you've been using keys all your life, with, which most of us have, probably all of us have, you can reach in, in your backpack or in a bag or something and say, hey, that's a key. <laughs> I can discriminate that information. I'm going to integrate my sensory information with the memories I have of things and identify that as a key. So um, if you have more um, complete memories, you can identify things even further. So the example that I use, um, when I was in school, we were doing um, in probably in neuro rehab lab or um, the classes were a little bit different when I was in school, so I don't remember which class it was in, but we were testing stereognosis on each other. And um, one of my classmates put her key into, um, into a bag, and I reached in there and I touched it and I said, oh, this is a key, actually it's a Toyota key. And it was, because she drove a Toyota. And my brain had that memory information because I used to drive a Toyota, and so I could discriminate between just any old key and a Toyota key because it had that distinctive Toyota feel to it. So because my memory included extra information about that key, I was able to integrate that proprioceptive and touch sense with memories that I had without using my vision to identify it even more specifically. Kind of interesting, really. So discriminative touch, of course, tells you, um, you know, what type of touch it is and exactly where it is. Um, the spinothalamic system travels within the anterolateral columns of the spinal cord. I hope you watched that um, spinal anatomy video because it's very helpful for identifying this stuff. Um, it, the spinothalamic system carries discriminative fast pain and temperature sen sensation and coarse touch. So we know it's those A delta fibers, the fast pain fibers. So fast pain is sharp initial pain also known as spinothalamic pain, that identifies the site of injury. It's very specific, very high fidelity. Um, the slow pain, that's that later pain that runs in those C fibers, and it's less um, accurately localized. Okay, so it's those A delta fast pain fibers, sharp initial pain. Um, to be aware of sensation, information must travel to the thalamus for crude awareness. Once it goes through the thalamus, then it goes to the cerebral cortex for discriminative, discriminative fine resolution. Okay, so I think I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again just so you know. If I put something in bold in the module, I probably want you to know that for the exam. Just FYI. So in order to be aware of sensation, information has to travel to the thalamus for crude awareness. And then it goes to the cerebral cortex for discriminative fine resolution. Okay, so um, the conscious relay pathways transmitted with high fidelity um, and it allows us to make fine distinctions about stimuli. Um, this is the somatotropic, uh, somatotopic uh, arrangement of information. There's a, this is pictures in the book, it's called the sensory homunculus. The primary sensory cortex, there are areas in this primary sensory cortex that map directly to certain areas of the body. And you'll see that some areas are disproportionately represented. Um, the hand is huge. We get a lot of sensory information from our hands. The face and mouth are really big. That's really important from a survival sense, you know, what we're eating, what we're tasting. 
um, and then other areas of the body are ranged. So when you get sensory information from your hand, boom, it goes right to that area in the primary sensory cortex. So the primary sensory cortex discriminates among the size, texture, or shape of objects. Um, so if it's like, say that, um, that we eat a berry, so it's going to tell us, okay, it's small, it's smooth on the outside, and it's round. Okay, so it's kind of telling us that information that we're getting from our mouth. And sweet, maybe it's sweet. Hmm. No, that's going to go in the cranial nerves. Never mind on the sweet. <laughs> so size, texture, and shape. The somatosensory association areas then analyze the information from the primary sensory area and the thalamus, and they provide stereognosis and memory of the tactile and spatial environment. So we ate that berry that was small, round, and sweet, and smooth on the outside, and then our somatosensory association area says, ah, I remember this taste. I remember this, this shape and the sensation of it in my mouth. This is a blueberry, and it's safe to eat. I've eaten these before, and they're delicious. Um, if it was maybe some other... Um, some other shape and size that we didn't remember, we might not have that information available to us. We know the size, shape, and texture, but our somatosensory association area isn't connecting the dots for us. So primary sensory cortex um, tells us the size, shape, and texture, and then the somatosensory association areas analyze that information and provide us with um, memory and um, other information about what we sensed. Okay, so there are, and this is just a review of what I just said, four types of somatosensation reaching conscious awareness. The um, pathways are either the dorsal column medial lemniscus and the anterolateral tracts, which is the spinothalamic tract, discriminative touch, conscious proprioception, um, stereognosis. And so the pathways for discriminative touch and conscious proprioception use a three-neuron relay. Um, the neurons are either referred to as primary, secondary, and tertiary, or first order, second order, and third order. So the primary conveys information from the receptors to the medulla. The secondary conveys information from the medulla to the thalamus. The tertiary conveys information from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. So this is um, a... A graphic from the book which it's really kind of hard to see here it's pretty small but um, it's on page 114 in the book and it shows um, the pathway through the different parts of the spinal column and brain those first second and third order neurons and then at the bottom it lists um, where the uh, first second and third order neurons go and which neurons they are so the dorsal column medial lemnistic a lemniscus system, um, the primary neurons, there are lots of different branches entering the gray matter of the spinal cord from different areas. So it's a lot of different sensory systems contributing to it. And the secondary neurons, um, their cell bodies are located in the spinal cord. So in the PowerPoint here, it says specifically where in the spinal cord they're located, but you, you don't really need to memorize that. Um, just that the cell bodies are located in the gray matter of the spinal cord. Um, the axons that cross the midline um, then ascend to the thalamus. So um, we'll talk a little bit about where things cross over because that's, it'll be relevant when we start talking about spinal cord injuries. Um, the, uh, in the dorsal column medial lemniscus system, the um, the axons cross the midline um, in the spinal cord and then ascend to the um, through the medulla to the thalamus. The third order neurons connect the thalamus to the sensory cortex, and those have axons which are fibers connecting the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. So um, really, just know that um, there are three neurons, one is the peripheral sensory neuron, one goes from the spine to the thalamus, and one goes from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. Um, both 
The dorsal columnate lumniscus and the spinal thalamic system consist of three neuron relay paths. Um, in contrast to discriminative touch and, con and uh, conscious proprioception information in the um, dorsal column, the anterolateral column, which the spinal thalamic system runs in, um, contains axons transmitting information about pain, temperature, and coarse touch. So um, the dorsal column medial lumniscus is, is fine touch, discriminative touch, and conscious proprioception. Um, spinal thalamic is pain, temperature, and coarse touch. So um, the functions of the dorsal column and the anterolateral column um, are not rigidly segregated. So there could be some non-discriminative coarse touch touch information in the anterolateral system and some pain and temperature information in the dorsal column. So we're getting sensory information from things that are happening and basically they're going to take one of these two pathways to get to the brain and then they might join together at the thalamus and come across as a set of sensations in the primary sensory cortex. So just know that it's not um, it's not carved in stone what section things run in, if that makes any sense. Okay, we're going to wrap up this section. In the next section, we're going to start talking about the divergent pathways.